Hello there, I'm Lloyd Evans and you're watching the John Cedars channel from The Bunker and I am very excited because this is a rare moment. This is in fact the first ever Bunker interview because I have a guest in The Bunker. My guest is an inspirational activist from Poland, Sarah Kozub. Sarah, That's thank right. you for joining me. I'm really happy to be here right now. It's an absolute thrill. We've just had a lovely lunch together and uh, Sarah's been telling me all about life in Poland. So I guess the biggest question that I have about your country is what on earth has been going on there? <laughs> I wish I could answer with one sentence because we don't have any proper report on this subject. We can just guess and I could talk about it if you want to, but you know, it's just not one, one sentence. Sure. Yeah, you were saying before that there's there are a number of kind of thing, you know, you have a number of guesses mm -hmm. as to why Probably the numbers have reduced. The publishers in Poland would say that, oh, you know, all the witnesses in Poland go to UK or other country, mm. but you check the numbers, so there's something wrong. Yeah, I did check the numbers just before uh, we spoke, and by the way, I'm I'm interested in this, but I'm really more interested in your story, which we will get to. But um, I did jump on the figures just now, and the, the Polish peak publishers in 2009 were 126,518 um, and as of last year 2018 so nine years later um, they were 116,299 which is a drop of about 10,000 in nine years mm -hmm. which that's a lot <laughs> that's a lot <laughs> So they um, couldn't all go to the UK. No, and and if they had all gone to the UK, the, the question then would be, um, what's gone wrong in the UK? Because mm -hmm. that would because the numbers the numbers in the UK have been stagnant. So that would mean that the the loss of ten thousand had actually happened in the UK and not Poland. That's mm -hmm. the way I think of things. Okay, well we'll we'll maybe revisit that later. Um, but could you kind of give us some idea? Because you, just so the viewers know. Um, those of those of you who are watching from Poland will recognize Sarah because Sarah has had a lot of publicity um, but maybe in America in the UK they're, they're not so familiar so mm -hmm. why don't we back up and if you could tell us how you first came to be involved with Jehovah's Witnesses I was born in the family of uh, Jehovah's Witnesses and my family was very into the religion we were uh, going into every meeting, my dad was an elder, I was pioneering sometime during my teenager's years, I wanted to go to the missionary school, uh, that's why I started learning English, mm. and that, that's how, how was it, I, I always thought I never, never be um, older than 25, because every m memorial I heard that that's the last memorial, <laughs> so I always thought I never never age. Sure. So you took it very seriously, mm -hmm. um, you know, wanting to, like you say, pioneer and all, and and really involve yourself. Do in my your... best. Sure. Um, and d did that happen? Did you pioneer? Did you? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I pioneered for a few years. I met my husband, um, then I stopped pioneering, but we, we still go to every meeting, uh, to service. He was a minister ser servant, mm -hmm. um, and we still believe that that's the best way to, to live. Uh, we always feared that uh, when we go, for example, to Croatia, to, to seaside, there will be Armageddon and we will be not close to our congregation. We always thought it's, you know, just around the corner. That's fascinating because I, I remember taking things seriously but never so seriously that... Yeah, my, my husband, maybe you remember such a video or something, short video, um, about cleaning windows uh, in, uh, you know, that any work is okay for, for JW. And my husband took it to his heart and he, he, he ruined his business uh, kind of. Now, now we are making it better again, but you know, he... he Instead of making good decision, he he was making wrong. Just you know, I take any work just to live month by month. Right. So, would you say that the that your devotion to the religion 
had an impact on you and your husband financially? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, uh, definitely. Yeah. And presumably neither of you went through college or university? <laughs> of course not. No. Would you have liked to have done that? Uh, yes, I'd like that. Uh, mm. Now now it's, it's, kind of too, it's kind of too late and I also think mm, the college in Poland now is not offering me what I want to do now. But that time uh, I would like to go. Mm. Now you mentioned that you were afraid to come on holiday in case Armageddon arrived while you were on holiday. Mm-hmm. You know, I do have some subscribers who've never been Jehovah's Witnesses before, so they might they may find that very odd. Talk me through your mindset. What what do you what do you imagine would happen if Armageddon had come while you were on holiday? Well, I don't know exactly. It's kind of irrational, mm. unlogical. Um, we really believe that this is the right way um, of life. That the Armageddon is very near, and you have to live as close to Jehovah and. By that I mean do whatever uh, the organization is telling you to mm. do um, to survive. Because I have a very strong fear um, against uh, Armageddon. Uh, even if I was a witness, I always thought um, maybe I did something wrong. Maybe I won't make it. And what happened to my children who are small? Do they make it? Uh, is something wrong going to happen with, with them? I was very afraid of, of that. and. Uh, I think that fear gave me anxiety and depression. Hmm. Were you worried that if Armageddon came when you were on holiday that it would look bad that you were enjoying yourself when you should have been? Mm, no, I think it was, you know, like um, in convention, uh, elders felt that you have to be to the kingdom hall, you have to go to the bunker mm. or something, you have to have your backpack, mm. that kind of thoughts. Okay, so you, you, you suffered with anxiety mm-hmm. um, was that something you were able to get medical help for um, yes but uh, mm. I went to the uh, doctor when I got my first doubt uh, thoughts so I decided to go and I tell my psychiatrist all about my history a family that I was a witness and that finally kind of helped me okay so at what point did things start to unravel? At what point did you start to suspect that maybe this wasn't true? Well, I, on the irrational uh, level, I always didn't have heart for it. Mm. You know, I felt that that fear is not good. I had an episode with small child abuse, me as, as, a, as a child. Oh, really? Really, but you know, I don't want to talk about it because no. it's it's connected with my... Um, family so mm. so live it um, I always felt that in congregation there are better and worse people better usually are elders and the children and I was a uh, daughter of elders so you know I was good uh, but I had a friend uh, her mom was single uh, and um, and she always was you know kind of other children laughed at her because she know she was no elders daughter uh, now, now she left the organization and she's very happy, but I always felt it's not like it's love and friendship in congregation. Uh, there are dark sides too. So you, you mentioned there that you're, you were the daughter of an elder. Did that play a role in maybe suppressing doubts to any extent? Because sometimes when you are raised a witness, there's the expectation that, that's placed upon you by your family, you know? Mm, not really, uh, mm. because it was all all, all me. Mm. My dad, of course, he believed uh, very deeply in organization, but my brother was raised the same way as I was, and he he had mm. all, <laughs> all, you know. He didn't take it as seriously. No, 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 no. But I was very serious into it. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe it was just my character. You know, I know some witnesses who are still witnesses, but they... Oh, it does the talking of the elders and I don't mind. And me and my husband, we we take it to the heart and we were really obedient. And I think uh, that that kind of gave us depression. And that was the reason we also left, because we couldn't take it anymore. If we were just like, oh, I go to the service one once a month or, or less, it will be good. No, we, we were li- really into it. 
Now, you mentioned your husband. We were obviously having a meal just now. <laughs> and so we, we did talk about a few things. And before the meal, your husband told me that he was the one that woke up first. Mm -hmm. and, and that when he woke up, there was a period where you guys weren't sleeping in the same room. Yes, yes I, I saw myself as a single mom in uh, separation. Because really? you couldn't divorce, of course, no, yes, no. but in separation. And I, got, I, I picture myself as I'm walking into the kingdom hall with my children alone because, you know, I'm a, I'm a devoted uh, woman to the, to the, to the Jehovah. So, but talk me through, I mean, that's quite a big deal. You, I mean, imagining wanting to sleep in a separate room, you must have been really annoyed at him. I was, I was. I was very angry. I, I even told him... Uh, we, sh we we promised each other something different. We were supposed to um, cherish Jehovah together to the end. And now you're telling me you don't believe? Hmm. What's wrong with you? He even listened to you. Uh, and I was like, oh no, I'm heading, I'm putting my headphones and I'm watching uh, broadcasting right now so he can, he can see. Really? <laughs> yeah, it was that bad. But it only lasted for two weeks. Right, so what you're telling me is, your husband said, I'm going to listen to a John Cedars video, and your solution was, well, in that case, I'm going to watch a JW broadcast. Exactly. <laughs> I hope I could turn him away. Mm. Wow. And presumably that didn't work. No, no, no. I, I just uh, thought uh, I should risk. Uh, if I love him so much and I trust him, and I never put my faith into doubt. I never read any material, you know, apostate material, even uh, comments on websites, nothing. So I said, okay, if that's true, it can defend itself. So one night he was sleeping and I was just reading. One night. And in the morning I was like, no, it's not true. I, I wasn't sure what should I believe, what what's, what's wrong with birthdays and 1914, but I knew that it's, it's not true. Mm. And what kind of, so you do this overnight while your husband is sleeping, what does the conversation go like the next morning? I, I don't remember exactly, it was December 2016, we had a um, um, circuit overseer uh, mm. at that time in our congregation, but I, I think I w woke him up and said something like that, no, you were right. I don't believe anymore. Really? That was, yeah, really. <laughs> that's a good way to wake up if you're uh, if you're an awakened husband and you have a wife who's you know feels so strongly that she's sleeping in another in another room. That must have been a very welcome wake up for him. Um, but I think the unique thing. Well, first of all, take me through what happened next because obviously, once you've reached this stage as a couple, mm -hmm. you then have presumably family who are JWs, you have the congregation. So how did you handle, you know, transitioning with your family and friends? Mm. That time I believed uh, in God yeah, uh, yet. Um, but I uh, said and had been told that we couldn't go anymore to the meeting. But we had a um, circuit over here. So we went through that two meetings. It was the last meetings ever. And then it was December and then on March or April, I don't remember that year, we went to memorial and nothing else. Um, it was kind of wrong uh, because we were a very active family. So we should like, you know, fly lower, lower and be um, quiet. quiet. Mm. Uh, and we were just like, boom, <laughs> we don't go to the meetings anymore. And everybody in the congregation was, what's wrong with them? What happened? They called us. Um, they wanted to give us shepherds visits. Uh, and I, I said I, I, I had depression because I was uh, after a visit to my psychiatrist then and I don't want to talk about it. Um, and when somebody was really deeply uh, into that, we said it was because of uh, Royal Commission and we are afraid of our children, which usually uh, shout them they mount. And you, you say that, but that's actually quite a compelling argument when you do have you. I mean, how old were your kids when you first woke up? Um, it was 2016, so my older daughter was um, six, mm -hmm. and the younger has uh, half half a year, six months. Yeah, so that wasn't just kind of like 
trying to throw them off the scent. That's a legitimate reason, isn't it, to not go to the Kingdom Hall if yeah. you have young children and the elders aren't properly protecting mm -hmm. children. Especially that I had a um, talk with uh, elders as an adult about my uh, episode, which mm. was in the past, but um, that talk, uh, uh, I was an... Um, I wasn't abuser. I was, uh, you know, how to say it. Um, I had to talk about that man who abused me, but I felt guilty during that that, that talk, and I was an adult woman. You felt so. You were required to talk to the elders. Yes, I was kind of witness of child oh, abuse. Okay. You know, they. It was in the past. They needed proof. They, yeah. you know, because uh, they the need to witness. witness rule. Yes. And I was talking about the um, history, who, what happened in the past. Yeah. But that talk made me feel guilty and make make made me feel worse uh, with my depression. Yeah, I would imagine it was basically revictimizing you mm -hmm. to, to put you in that situation. No, I, I think they wanted to be nice, but you know right. they have no knowledge about talking about such things. Yeah, and um, can I, can I just ask, was the and I, I know you don't want to talk about it, but was the man who did that, was he punished? Mm, not really. That time he was already very old and yeah. not in his state of mind, if you yeah. know what I mean. Yeah. So he wasn't conscious of anything what's happened right. about him and he died a few months later. Sure, so. I understand. But e even so, it must have had a bearing on the revelations that you were reaching studying by yourself when you were researching about the child abuse issue and mm -hmm. you had personal knowledge of that yeah it was it was terrible i i can't read some materials until today actually i i can understand that yeah um it's not it's something that i hasn't impacted me personally and i still struggle mm. to because uh, you're dealing with the worst of humanity, you're you're dealing with the absolute darkest evil that you can imagine. Um, but you going back to waking up, you you start kind of giving these reasons to the elders and your family members, but presumably they weren't satisfied with what you were they saying weren't. to them. <laughs> um, they, they wanted to talk to us to help us, um, but we kind of. T told them that it's my depression and we need peace mm. and they they left us but yeah. also uh we were now um, quiet publisher i don't know how to say inactive it. inactive yes yeah. so almost all the congregation also stopped talking with us because we were inactive we were like almost dead mm. you know isn't it fantastic isn't it fascinating because it's prequel to being disfellowshipped. <laughs> Indeed, and we're talking about a religion that this year, in fact, as we're doing this interview, is doing conventions type themed Love Never Fails, mm -hmm. and this is supposed to be the most loving organization, mm -hmm. and yet you don't have to be disfellowshipped to no, be shunned. All it takes is to stop going to the meetings. Even my, my one one of one friend of mine, um, they she wasn't going to a meeting. She she she. She just attend mm, one one a uh, half year, uh, but she was very believing. And when I told her about my doubts, she just went to the elders right 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 away. Mm, and she she also sh stops going to the meeting, but she believed. So she thinks she's good, uh, and I have a doubt, so she cannot talk to me anymore. And I tell her, but people don't talk to you too because you are inactive. That doesn't matter for her. So you're in this situation where you're inactive now mm -hmm. and you're being shunned. Um, yeah. Did things kind of deteriorate from there? Because I know we're now at a point where you are disfellowshipped. Uh, actually, I dis disfellowshipped you, myself. You disassociated, yes, yes. yeah. Okay, so how did, how did you disassociate? Um, the time go, goes by and my husband's sister, um, she, she was going to be married and it was a um, witness um, wedding, so we didn't want to spoil it to her. So we decided we wait to that wedding. Mm. And after that, I said to Edwin, 
I had enough. I had enough that I can post a picture that my children are celebrating birthday because somebody will see it and I will have the talk with the elders. So I just uh, write a letter and post it on my blog. Right, wow. Wow, so um, how, what, are you, what had you been blogging about up to that point? Lifestyle, parenting, you know, that sure. c- girly kind of stuff. Okay, so, so kind of lifestyle parenting, disassociation <laughs> yes, from yes, a religion. Yes, and it was like very, very shocking. And I had a um, call from the elders uh, like two days later. Do you do I sustain with with that my pu- publicity? That's my- interesting because that's what they said to me as well. They they literally brought when I had my apostasy trial, they brought a printout and <laughs> they even had like pink highlighter on the sheet. I was like, why do you re- do you really need to highlight certain <laughs> things? And they said, uh, do you stand by what you yeah. wrote here? Yeah. yeah, they were very nice. They wanted to meet with me. They wanted to talk with me. I think they 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 think that I was kind of naive I, and I didn't know what what I'm doing. But I, I said, "Come on, guys! I know where you calling me. Let's let's get this done." Wow, fantastic! So they they disassociated, or you'd already disassociated yourself, however you want to describe it. Um, what happened with your husband? Mm. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. That's funny thing. Uh, they, they of course called him. They offered to help him because I was such a bad wife right now, um, and they they wanted him to meet to invite them to the co- convention, and that that's it. Never called again. But isn't he disfellowshipped as well? Yes, he 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 is. But he um, after after half uh, six months after me. Right. So did he did he send a letter in or No, no. He he just didn't mind. He 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 did what what he wanted to do. And when he printed some of anti JW um, stickers. Oh, of course. Yeah, cuz he he on, runs on a the printing door. So, so company. people could yeah. stick it and uh so JW won't uh, knock on their on the door. So uh they knew it's our pr- print shop. So yeah. So, so Sarah and her husband. But run. even even that time, they they asked him to stop selling it. Not not. But he said, "Come on, guys, you know, uh, I'm not stopping selling the, it. Uh, you can disfellowship me." Okay, so just for some context, Sarah and her husband own like a marketing advertising company that does some printing. Yes. And and <laughs> that you were at one point. Printing the um, adverts that go on the carts for yeah, cart for, for for few congregation uh, in our, I think all in our city and few we sent through Poland. Right, uh, and then of course they they stopped ordering those uh, yeah, but posters. At one point, simultaneously to printing <laughs> those, you were also printing stickers that yes, people could yes. put on their doors saying "Don't call if you're a Jehovah's exactly. Witness," and that's what got him disfellowshipped. Mm-hmm. Okay, fascinating. Now, um, again, viewers who are familiar with Sarah in Poland will know that you've done a lot of media. So you did your blog article, but you. But all- it was just by accident because I I told you I wrote it because when a woman is disfellowshipped, they they say that of course they she cheated her husband. So I wanted to tell my story first. How how was it? I knew there w- would be rumors. But I hope that some some friends maybe will read this and understand me. Yeah, so you were trying to preempt the JW grapevine from mm-hmm. swinging into action so that everyone could know what your reasons yes. were. Um, which is fantastic. But was it the blog that got you the media attention? Mm-hmm. And it was all by accident because I, I wasn't ex- ex- expecting um, such, such things that happens later. Uh, our friend... Um, put it on the website kind of like reddit in poland and it was very popular and then one journalist uh, asked me about uh, interview uh, and then from the um, polish tv called it and was like what ha- what's happening to me i'm shy i i'm afraid of talking to people how can i cope with this well you coped very well and just to show viewers This is actually a clip of Sarah on Polish television. 
Ja mam dwie córki. Ja się po prostu o nie bałam. I rozmawialiśmy nawet u nas, tak lokalnie, czy gdyby u nas w mieście, w tym zborze naszym pojawił się o takich skłonnościach ktoś, to czy nam powiedział, słuchajcie, uważajcie na tego i tego, bo, bo on ma takie skłonności. Nie dostaliśmy zadowalającej odpowiedzi. Po prostu bałam się o dzieci. I to był, to był moment, w którym zaczęłam po prostu szukać głębiej, porównywać moje, po raz pierwszy zaczęłam porównywać moje wierzenia z innymi materiałami. Zaczęłam szukać źródeł cytatów, które są podawane w czasopismach. Porównywałam różne przekłady Pisma Świętego. Bo ogólnie w tej religii jest troszkę tak, że oni zniechęcają do, do zaglądania do innych źródeł, niż jest ich oficjalna możemy strona. możemy powiedzieć, że to jest taka psychomanipulacja? Manipulacja. Tak, to jest psychomanipulacja, dokładnie. Jest wprost powiedziane na przykład w jednym wideo, że takie materiały na przykład, tak jak dzisiaj my, my rozmawiamy, to to jest manipulacja diabła, to są kłamstwa, to są oszczerstwa. Mamy tylko wierzyć w to, co mówią oni. I... So I think you'll agree that Sarah handled herself very well in that situation. Obviously, I've also been on, done some stuff on television and it can be very stressful. So mm -hmm. talk us through what it's like having exited a religion in which you have your family and friends and then you are on television in your country in front of your family and friends talking about your religion in in a negative light what's that process like um, actually i was thinking about uh, saying yes to that stuff a few days i was asking uh, that friends that left me and my family that was with me uh, and eventually i decided to go and all that time i thought that this is the right thing to do to tell people that they cannot shun. That, that was the reason, actually. That was your main message, was it? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And what impact did that interview have in terms of viewers and in terms of the reaction with your friends and family? Um, well, my friends, old friends, uh, of course, they uh, deleted my Facebook. Uh, no, no, you know, we, we stopped being friends. Unfriended you, yeah. Unfriended. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh dear, they, they stopped talking to me. Uh, once I was walking through my city, uh, my uh, fellow, my ex friend, uh, was literally killing me <laughs> with his eye. Looking daggers at yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Like I was the, 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 the meanest person in the whole city. Right now it's been two, almost two years, so you know, it's, it's, it's peace and chill and they don't mind. But right now it was, it was hot. <laughs> yeah. And, and how many, what was the viewership of that? Because I think the YouTube videos got how many? Over a million views? I don't, we have, you have, we have to check it because I don't remember. Go on, we'll um, check it. Edwin probably remembers uh, well because he has uh, talent to the numbers. <laughs> What's it called? Uh, Sara. Yeah. Andre. A N D R Y C. Yes. The first one. You see, that's how popular you are <laughs> on YouTube. All I have to do is type in one, two, three, four, <laughs> five, six, seven, eight, nine characters, and it's there. Yeah, it's it's me. So it's it's actually. Um, 535,000 views, which is amazing. That's a lot. And um, and this is obviously a, a Polish interview, so presumably a, a lot of the viewership there is Polish people. Definitely, because it was uh, broadcast on um, Polish br breakfast TV in the morning, like 9 or 10 uh, a.m. Uh, I don't know how many people was watching it uh, live. But, you know. <clears throat> but wasn't there also kind of, uh, we were saying before, there was some kind of um, news website that had yours as like the top story of... Yes, yes, there was a one news site and it, it was it was put in the section women, women mm -hmm. uh, and then it got to the, the main site. And then when there was an annual report of the 2018, they also... Uh, brought my story back uh, and they put me right in uh, next to the uh, footballer Robert Lewandowski maybe yes, you know I him. do know Robert Lewandowski <laughs> and I'm annoyed at him for not joining Manchester United because he's a good player so yeah you were right at the top of of the Polish news which is just fantastic and I think it 
it in some way explains i know we touched on it earlier but it in some way explains the fact that there is something happening in poland mm -hmm. it may be hard to understand what the exact dynamics are i think it's too simplistic we agreed earlier to just say oh they've, they've all moved to the uk um whether it's something in the kind of polish mentality because th this is a country that's historically yes, had we, a lot of hardship you know we, we like to, to be rebellious yeah we don't like bullshit <laughs> you can <laughs> beat me later <laughs> no i'm not going to beep you it's not it's not the bbc okay <laughs> Uh, so that's that's one thing. Mm. Uh, another thing is uh, that there are, there are many people who are working on it. Even before me and my husband, um, there are people who are um, copying um, old watchtowers and they are making description of it so so they can so other people can read that. Look, they they change the light. Mm. Uh, and um, there are people who are making, uh, organizing manifestation. Uh, you know, there are like protests. The, yes, yeah. protests, uh, and uh, during the con uh, convention. Mm, right. Mm, what else? Mm, they are um, working with leaflets and flyers and posters in public communication, um, and uh, you know, I think it's because also we talk in Polish, so we. When you read uh, a headline in English, even if you understand it, you know, oh, it's it's somewhere away, uh, maybe it's it's a lie. And when you read it in, in your language, <laughs> uh, you kind of believe it more. Yeah, that was going to be one of my questions, actually. So when, when it comes to understanding what's the latest thing that's happening with the organization, I would imagine it helps to speak English. Yes, it definitely helps. That's why it's it's a very great thing that we have people uh, on on websites who are um, translating, who are uh, telling other people, even if not translating, they are telling, oh, he said that and that, and look, look, in the new watchtower will be that and that. Uh, and I think that it's great because uh, someone who doesn't speak English, he can uh, read it and understand it. Right. And it's great that, like you say, there are activists who are going to that effort because would it be fair to say that if you don't speak English you're at a disadvantage when it comes to the possibility of waking up mm -hmm, exactly that's how it feels here in Croatia I mean I'm not really involved with local activism in Croatia but I did a newspaper article and one of the points I made was it's a different religion mm -hmm. if you're Croatian because there's some things that you just don't have have a way of knowing about yes, you know because there are some some books uh, which wasn't weren't translated into... indeed so yeah I think it's fantastic that there are like you say activists who are making leaflets and mm -hmm. um, going to su such efforts to get the information yes, they're out. making uh, videos on YouTube also they are uh, talking about uh, new lights, uh, about uh, conventions. Those materials are mainly um, directed to people who are doubting or are thinking about leaving. Uh, and the leaflets, uh, are it's, they are focused on um, shunning and blood transfusion. And they are um, mm, for simple people. You know who are not witnesses, and they to to have great greater awareness of the topic, mm. because most people think, oh, those witnesses they sometimes knock on my door on Sunday morning when I'm cooking dinner, but they are generally nice people. Sure. So, could, if I um, would I be able to put some links in the description? If you could, you would would you be able to provide me with links mm -hmm. to Polish resources, just in case there are any viewers from Poland. And maybe this is the first video they see and then we can mm -hmm. direct people. Um, and I would also really like it if you could, and <laughs> I'm taking a big risk here with you, Sarah. Okay. I'd like you to... But not sing, please. I don't, well, if, if you want to <laughs> no, sing, no. Um, I'd like you to give a message in Polish. Mm, to whom? To any who are watching who maybe they they still believe and this is the first video that they've seen um what would be your message to witnesses who are maybe on the fence um who are polish and they watch this video in polish mm -hmm. right now 
Okej, okay, to powiem to, co powiedziałam Lloydowi. Jeśli naprawdę w to wierzycie, to nie bójcie się zaryzykować i spróbować zakwestionować swoją wiarę i znaleźć materiały inne niż strażnicy. Coś jeszcze? Something else? I could took more and more. Go for it, yeah. Bo, bo wiecie, w strażnicy to jest trochę tak, że oni podają, że poza strażnicą, poza materiałami z organizacji to będą pisać o nas źle. A ja to trochę tak postrzegam jak chodzenie do restauracji. Oczywiście, że na stronie restauracji to będą pisali same superlatywy, ale dlatego sprawdzasz opinię w Google, w, Google, w TripAdvisor i na innych stronach, żeby się dowiedzieć, czy tam, czy tam ktoś się nie zatruł, czy ktoś nie przepłacił, czy faktycznie jest to tak dobre, jak mówi o tym strona restauracji, więc po prostu sprawdzajcie i nie bójcie się tego, bo to troszkę boli, ale nie jest tak źle. Wonderful. <laughs> I even understood one word in that, which <laughs> trip was <laughs> which was trip advisor. Yeah. Yeah, because you know, in Watchtower there was um, some some sentence that oh, you cannot uh, read what others write about us because it's wrong. But you know, when you look for a restaurant, um, a restaurant writes about itself. Oh, we are great. We have the best food. And someone on Google trip advisor says, I get the stomach flu after <laughs> eating it. Yeah. So we have to check it. Sure. In including when you're checking out Croatian restaurants, which I know you've had to do here on holiday. But listen, Sarah, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here. I think that you are an inspirational woman who has done a fantastic job of raising awareness of a very serious issue of shunning in Poland. I think you're a credit to your country and please keep up the good work. Okay. Shake your hand. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here because actually... Um, i lost my heart to organization, but your materials helped me free my mind. Wow. So thank you very much. Well, I'm, I'm blown away by that and I'm very proud to have played some part. So thank you. So viewers, I hope you've enjoyed this interview. I know I have. Don't forget to subscribe to the John Cedars channel for more such videos. But for now, thank you so much for watching.